Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Caitlin and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. Today I am sharing everything I made in the month of March as well as to discussing my spring sewing plans which is going to mean April and May. So let's dig in. The first thing I made in the month of March was this bathing suit for my daughter. So if you caught my video where I went through their wardrobes and sewed some stuff for them, you will know that I missed making her a bathing suit. So I got to that. I used this fabric that I got on Distashify. It's adorable mermaids and I think there's some, yeah, there's like narwhals and crabs and starfish. Maybe it's a whale fish, I don't know, all kinds of sea life. So she chose that for the entire body of the swimsuit. And she also chose the pattern, which was the Cape Cod swimsuit pattern from Ellie and Mac. And in that pattern, it actually has three peep outs here, or cutouts here. And she only wanted one, so that was simple. All I did was just not cut those ones out. And then for the strap, she wanted, well, it's ice cream, print fabric, but you can't tell that. It's folded so small. And this is designed to tie around the neck as a halter, but instead of doing that, we just attached them to the back and it worked beautifully. Actually, I think I would always do that. I don't know that I would tie it around the neck. I don't like halters for myself, so I can't imagine it would be comfortable for a child. So, that is pretty much all there is to say about that. I made the size five. She is almost seven but she fit kind of between the I think she fit into the six but I didn't want it to be her measurements put her in the six but then the finished measurements made more sense to make a five something like that or the length she was the width of a five and the length of a six or something but I just made a straight size five and it fits perfectly it's it's awesome and I I often find myself sewing a size bigger for them or even a half size bigger so that they can fit it longer but in reality i need to just make it for now so that's what i did i made it for now it will fit her through summer i do believe and i have lots of swimsuit fabric for her of this this print and the the ice cream cone print and that gingham print if you remember my haul you would have seen that so there's no need that i need to like uh, working from scarcity rather than abundance. So I made it in her size, fits great, works great. She will wear it for this year and honestly it'll probably wear out before she outgrows it anyway. So on to the next thing. Next, I finally, finally, finally have a pair of proper jeans to wear for myself. It has been years, it might be like 10 years. I don't even know if I've bought a new pair of jeans since I've had kids. No, I don't think I have. So it's been a very long time since I've had a new proper wear of je pair of jeans for myself. So you guys know I have been trying to make myself a pair of jeans. I think it's been on my make nine for, th I think this is the third year now. So it's been a long time coming. I bought the Meg Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans pattern over a year ago. And then last fall I started working on it. I made a pair of green bull denim pants and then a pair of faux leather ones and those are okay. Uh, there was some adjustments that I needed to make. So this pair actually ended up just being straight size 14 and I shortened the leg at the thigh by three and a half inches so that the knee is raised up to my proper knee place and then I cut it at the regular cut line. I did a total of four centimeter hem so it's four centimeters folded up but folded twice, so two centimeters and two centimeters. And it's like just long enough. When I wear shoes, it's like they're a little short. So I'm not sure if I'm going to take those, take the hem out and make a narrower hem. We will have to see. I do have room to do that, so I'm not concerned there. The other thing to mention, or one of the other things to mention, is the waistband is large. So on that green pair of pants, I used a 12 waistband and it's tight. This is the 14 and it's loose. <laughs> so clearly I need to go halfway in between, which is frustrating. Um, but I mean, they work, you know, it wouldn't be so much of an issue if I could wear a belt with it, but the belt that I own does not fit through these belt loops because women 
apparently wear tiny little belts all the time. So that's something to consider if you're making these pants. Another thing, I need to add rivets. I have finally figured out why jeans have rivets right here. It's to hold this pocket in place so it doesn't pop out and that drives me insane. So I have to get some rivets for that. The back pockets, I, I don't know why, I put them on after and then I realized when I made my um, leather ones, I put them on first, like when everything was flat and they ended up being perfect. So I don't know why I waited till after, but I did. And I didn't do any adornment on the back pockets, but maybe for the next pair I will. I was like, I actually, I actually ran out of top stitching thread. So the hem is just a regular thread. So I decided to use the top stitching thread. Everything I had was left to do, add the pockets and I had just enough. I figured that was more important than the hem. For the facings, I used some washed linen from my stash, just some uh, remnant pieces. So I did that for the facing and then for the pocket bag as well. I did not interface anything. So I'm not a fan of interfacing. If I can avoid it, I will. So I figured the denim was sturdy enough that I didn't have to do that. And it's been fine. I did add twill tape in the seam allowance of the waistband, the top seam allowance. Trick I learned from Whitney over at Tomcat Stitchery. And, oh, the denim. I didn't even tell you guys. This is 10 ounce denim from Simplify Fabrics. And I bought it quite a long time ago, but I did check and they do still have it. I used just a regular nylon coil zipper from my stash because that's what I had, that was the right length. And then the button is a vintage gold button also from my stash. I made the straight leg version of these pants. So the Don jeans have a straight leg, a wide leg, shorts, and a skinny or, or I don't know if it's skinny or just tapered leg. And that's good. They It is like a no stretch denim. so. There's no spandex in it at all. So I do notice that kind of when I'm like sitting, I can't necessarily put my legs up to be super comfortable. But I mean, for a good sturdy pair of jeans, they're doing great. And yeah, I've been really enjoying wearing them and feeling like a regular person again. <laughs> then I did a couple of smaller sewing projects. So if you saw my reel, I did some cloth pads. So some self-care sewing there. Uh, you can check out the reel if you're interested in that. And then I made my daughter a pillow. So you would call this like a bolster. Is that the right word? Or um, a lumbar pillow. I actually made this for on her bed to go between her regular pillows and the wall because her bed is a little bit further out from the wall just because we have stuff plugged in there and there's a gap that her pillows can fall down just the way we have made her bed frame and that. So I made her a pillow to go between that and this is actually really neat and a really quick project because I used an old bed pillow like a regular pillow you know how they get like super flat after a while uh, that's what I used and I rolled it up and I made a casing which was really quick it's just a rectangle and two circles and I stuffed it in there closed it up with a ladder stitch and it's finished so I do have a reel on this one as well that you can go and check out and just something fun but yeah it was a simple simple sew and it, it was one of those things that I've been putting off for like a year or more probably two years and then it took like all of 10 minutes to make so just one of those things you know and uh, so it feels so it was feeling really good to cross them some things off my list same with those cloth pads something I've been meaning to make for a couple years already and then the last thing I made was for so frugal if you don't know what that is I will link my so frugal video down below and actually the DIY tutorial for this dress. So this is just a basic t-shirt dress. I used a free pattern to start with. It was a free raglan shirt and then I had to change the size a little bit and I added length to make it a dress. I added a ruffle on the bottom for a cute little touch. I used the short sleeve but I did cut off a, quite a few inches to make it shorter and I think I'm going to actually make it even shorter to be a cap sleeve. Oh, and I used the green style green tea 
pattern to make a v-neck on here and I think it turned out really great and I am really excited to wear this. It's just cute and flirty and fun, easy breezy, super simple to just throw on and go with a pair of cute sandals for summer. So that is everything I made in the month of March. It felt good to do some like real honest to goodness sewing again and I'm excited to keep that momentum going for April and May. So let's see what I got planned for that. First things first, I have a pile of stuff. You know, we all have those piles of like mending and just quick little alterations that we want to get done. So I have a few of those things and I have a few cuts of fabric there sitting there as well for next projects. I recently organized my three sewing fabric drawers here and there was just these few cuts that didn't fit in, but I also plan to sew them up quickly anyway. So I would like to get that done and then I have, you know, these drawers, that's all the fabric I have and that would be so exciting. So one of the things in that pile was actually this shirt and yeah, I guess I can include it. I'll tell you about it because why not? All I had to do was turn under these cuffs and hand stitch it down. It's elastic in here and I had machine stitched it before but they were terrible so I pulled that out and I was just wearing them folded under and then I wasn't wearing this shirt because the front kept flapping open. I have this um, lace binding on here and it wasn't secured here so it kept like flapping open. And so all I had to do was take literally 30 seconds and put two stitches by hand in here, tie it off, and then I could wear it again. But I decided why not also hand stitch down the cuffs. So now I'm wearing it, same day. And the, well, if you're not familiar, this is the shirt. It's, it's self-drafted, I used my block. But yeah, so I'm really glad to have this thing because it's perfect for spring with the coral and really flowy, floaty. I'm wearing it today when, when I'm filming to an Easter party. Other things in that pile consist of like a pair of pajama pants for my husband that just need to be slimmed down, they're really wide. Um, there's some balclavas that need some modifications, which will be I guess for next winter now. And then I also pulled out one other thing that I want to work on because I want to wear them soon. So this was my olive jumpsuit from a needle sharp box and the problem that occurred was that it ended up being too big and then I did modify it to be kind of a v-back and I used the straps to make a halter and I mean I wore it but it was still big and I don't know it just wasn't like it wasn't something I grabbed all the time even though I love the fabric I think it's I think it's in my color palette there's like nothing wrong with anything other than maybe the style and not even the style but just it being like ill-fitting so my plan is to cut off the bodice and make this into a just a pair of pants and they are cropped because <laughs> there was a misfortune <laughs> but um, I think they'll be really fun and floaty for spring and summer and it's a viscose fabric so it should be really cool to wear as well so that's my plan for those all right then I had <laughs> then I had this which is another pair of Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. When I was cutting out the light wash pair, I also cut out this pair. If you remember, maybe you don't remember, maybe I didn't even tell you this, but I had originally planned to use this denim for my Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans, and I, I didn't have enough. I couldn't make it fit. And then I was like, there's gotta be a way. So I spent so much time crawling around on the floor getting this to work. Actually, it wasn't even that much time because it, it wasn't that bad. But once I had like the physical pieces cut for the light wash, I was able to lay them out on here. It just ended up being a little bit easier than uh, like manipulating it on the computer for my projector. Anyway, I have that cut out, so I might as well sew those up. And I have a kind of a darker um, goldy top stitch thread to go with that. So those should be nice and sharp looking. I haven't decided if I'm going to crop this pair or crop the other pair, um, we'll see. Then I have these this polka dot fabric, which is, I'm gonna say it's a ponty. I don't know if it's actually a ponty. It's some sort of stretch fabric, though it's very minimally stretch fabric. Navy with 
white polka dots and I want to make a pair of trousers out of this. So there is a sew over it pattern that I'm thinking of using and there's also another pattern called the Be Cool trousers. So I'm not sure which I'm going to choose. I'm, I'm leaning more towards the sew over it ones because they're shown in a polka dot. Does that ever happen to you? It's like that pattern's showing it in purple fabric, so I better use the that fabric that pattern because I already have the purple fabric. But yeah, it's kind of silly. So I'm leaning more towards those anyway. The other the other ones, the Be Cool pants have um, they're kind of more of a jean, and they also call for like a little bit of stretch fabric as well. So I really like the cuff on those ones, though is the only thing. So. Maybe I'll end up doing a hybrid, although I don't feel like these would need the detailed cuff. I think uh, the fabric speaks for itself here. So probably end up doing the sew over it trousers for that. And then I have this fabric, which I'm sure I've showed on the channel several times. It is a cotton fabric and it is, I don't think it's hand painted, but I think the design was hand painted and then it was like put on fabric. And it's a border print black background, all these really pretty colors. And I just love this fabric. I'm not gonna wear it up by my face because I really don't wear black at all. But I'm thinking of a skirt and I'm thinking of this McCall vintage McCall's pattern M4662. So it's very simple, straight, which is what I want to be able to showcase the fabric. And then it does have a ruffle at the bottom. So I'm gonna have like just enough. Actually, I think according to the envelope, I would be under, like I wouldn't have enough, but you know, they always say a little more, right? And I don't ever follow their cutting layouts. So it's gonna depend on how I wanna place the border print. I would ideally like that to be the, um, the bottom. And this is the selvage edge, it actually goes sideways. So I could just use this as the hem of the skirt and not do the ruffle. But I'm wondering if kind of a pencil skirt is really my thing. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I might end up just like making it more of a dart at the waist so that it's kind of more A-line skirt. We will see. But I think, I think that is the plan for that. I think this just screams spring even though it is on a back, black background. And I don't know. I really want to make something really neat and wearable with this fabric. There's only like a meter of it, so I have to be very careful. <laughs> and next up is this fabric. I am committed to getting this fabric done next. So I already have manipulated the pattern. I'm ready to project it. I just, it's been like evenings when I've wanted to do it because it's easier to cut when it's dimmer in here. And I, I just haven't felt like doing it. Like in the evenings, I get too tired. So this is, probably next on the list and between this and the Dawn jeans that are already cut out. I also thought of like just cutting a bunch of things out and then working through them. I know some people do that and it seems to work better since it feels like once you finish a project and then you're like, oh, I got to cut out a new one. But if you cut out a bunch at once, then maybe it would save that. I should try it. Let me know if you do that down below. This is going to be the Seamwork Emmy top. And again, I have, I will have just enough. I did figure out the measurements of this and then put it into my my um, projector program and placed the pieces and I will have enough. I don't have enough to do the big bonus sleeves, which I'm kind of disappointed about, but I also really like the gathered in sleeve. So yeah, I want to get this sewn up so I can wear it. Then I also have this double gauze fabric. This was in a recent haul as well, my most recent haul, Destashify. I think there's five yards of this and it is this, actually it's a single gauze. It's not a yeah, I think it's a single gauze and it's in this lovely brown color like a true brown like Crayola brown <laughs> and I I want to make a pair of Monroe pants with this nice flowy wrap pants I obviously have more than enough so Once that's made I will see how much I have left over and then if I want to make some sort of adorable wrap top with the rest or um, I don't know what else I I was very short on pants, um, trousers, jeans, etc. And now I'm going to have, I think I counted like five new pairs, four new pairs, which is a lot for me. So I don't think I would need two pairs of pants in this. Um, 
unless I decide to make like a loungewear type pair, but the Monroe pants are kind of loungy, so I don't know, we'll see. Monroe pants anyway. All right, and then there's two other cuts of fabric that were in that pile over there that didn't fit in my drawers that um, one I actually forgot about and the other one I was debating using for a t-shirt dress. So this is the one I was going to use for a t-shirt dress, ultimately decided to use the peach just because this is a little bit thinner and mm, more transparent, I guess. Uh, might still do some sort of t-shirt or, or something. There's quite a bit of this. I could do maybe like a tank top dress, something maybe more like with more interest around the bust so it's not so revealing, I guess. And then this is the fabric I forgot that I had, which would have been perfect for the t-shirt dress because it is, it is uh, much less see-through. And I believe it's a rayon as well. I think I got this from Destashify. I know I got this from Destashify. And it's a dark purple. The only thing is it's not very like spring or summery. So I think I might save this till fall and make it into a long sleeve shirt. I believe I just have one of those, so I could use another one. Or maybe it'll just become a regular t-shirt. It's not, I mean, I can still wear it in the spring and summer. It's just darker, right? The other thing is my daughter needs some just like play dresses, like t-shirt dresses that she can play in everyday wear kind of thing. And so this or the coral would work for that. Don't really have any other like nice jerseys. So I'll probably end up parting with one or some of both to make her one or two um, like everyday wear dresses. My daughter also needs a bunny hug. She does not have a bunny hug. If you don't know what a bunny hug is, I'm from Saskatchewan <laughs> and it's a hoodie, a hooded sweatshirt with a kangaroo pocket. So I'm going to make her one. She has chosen four fabrics here. I think these are all of my French terry that aren't gray. So there's a purple, this um, dusty pink, olive, and this leopard print, light leopard print. I used these three to make her uh, hoodie uh, one other time and then now she wants to throw in the purple as well. So I'll have to see what we can do. I don't know what pattern I'll use yet. I'm thinking likely it'll be the Summit Peak from New Horizons. I think I made that for her once though and it was slim on her and she doesn't like that. She wants it to be more like wider, just not like close fitting. So I'll have to see what I have. I'm sure I have something. I, oh, the Banff. Oh, I could make her the Banff hoodie and then use, oh, that would be really nice. This might end up becoming a Banff. Oh. You know, the other day I was just thinking about that pattern that I would love to use it again. Might have to do that. We'll see what she thinks. She's kind of particular. Oh, and this cut of fabric, well, actually it's a curtain, was in my pile as well. It's a pink denim, and I believe it was a curtain. I thrifted this recently. And yeah, I'd like to make something up with this for spring, summer because it's pink, and that's when I want to wear it. So I'm thinking either a pair of shorts, because I could use a pair of shorts, or capris, although again, I don't really need more, but we'll see. Something, something on my bottom. I also thought of doing like a jacket with it, but uh, to be honest, I don't really wear, but if I had it, would I wear it? I don't know. Or I could make myself a pair of shorts and my daughter a pair of shorts. There may be enough for that. And finally, I think I might work on some swimsuits for myself. So I'm going to use this swim material as muslins. There's a few patterns I want to try and I can't see myself wearing this fabric. It's much shinier than I had anticipated it would be. So I think it'll be great for muslins and then I can use it as like my at home bathing suit or my hot tub at my parents bathing suit. Something that doesn't really get seen that much. So yeah, that's the plan with that. I said finally, but no, that's not true. There is some other things I need to make. I also need to make myself some new undergarments so I could use two new bras and some new underwear. So I have the ruby bra pattern and that's what I'll use. I have all that lace I bought and a few new nice pretty pairs of underwear. So that's a lot of sewing to do in two months. So we'll see what I get up to. Stay tuned because uh, you know I'll show you how it goes. Thanks so much for watching and let me know down below what you plan to sew this spring if you're excited for the warmer weathers, assuming you live in the northern hemisphere. And if you like this type of content, hit the thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on future videos, hit subscribe so I can see you in the next one. Thanks again. Bye.